Okay, welcome back to Scallywags. Got Matt and Art here. We are doing some Lady M engine musings. Mm -hmm. It's early to there's, do this kind of math, Mike. It is early. early. Much, <laughs> much, yeah, yeah. Much, much contemplating that needs to happen. So, here. those of you that are following us, you know that we have to get an engine put back into this boat. Turns out. Unless you want to make Unless, holes and put some wars in there. Yeah, right. And yeah. that's not a. And you know, I want to do an electric boat desperately, but this is not the platform. I don't, I don't think that. Is. It's not. It's certainly not if we're not, you know, as a public institution, we're yeah. trying to make at least one penny as their goal. Yeah, know, right? So, yeah. Not lose all of our money. Mm -hmm. um, so we started by looking at the what the factory did 13 years ago. Sure. And that was a Volvo D3. D3 which has been well known in the industry to be kind of an abomination of, a, of an engine. I hate to say it, Volvo would agree, they've completely discontinued it. So okay. if we're going new, it makes no sense to try to source some old engine that's been abandoned even by the, the Swedes, yeah. in my opinion. And then the one that we have, the Yanmar, and turns out it's flooded with salt water. The Yanmar owners group, which is great, as is the Ranger Tug group, and. Uh, they don't make that Yanmar anymore. Huh. The BMW diesel marinized by Yanmar. So we, you know, the cost, I think, to source a cylinder head at a minimum and all the rebuild parts doesn't make sense. It doesn't, especially if you're thinking about, you know, maintenance and you're replacing parts in the future. Yeah, I, I think if you're just, going new again, it's like this is not working smart. So it's not working. Yeah, I think we'd just be setting someone up for heartache down the road. Plus, again, I think that engine that was in that was kind of, you know, Yanmar's answer for, hey, here's our tiny engine that we made for you, common rail, to fit in that tiny space. And uh, I don't think it was that good. I don't know that they've... I don't um, think so. They, yeah. they the, certainly and, didn't make them for su super long. And serviceability was certainly... Yeah. Well, it's a lot of busted knuckles. Yeah. So. Right. And with either of those, the D3 or that, that Yanmar that was in there... Um, you know, I think it goes against kind of everything what we're about here, which is being able to maintain your engine. And, you know, they pack those babies in there so tight that getting to servicing belts and filters and things like that was just nuts. Problematic, so, for mm -hmm. sure. So uh, we're going to push the delete button on the Yanmar, which means we can sell all the parts to somebody because there's going to be a need for these for the computer. and. Oh, yeah. Heat exchangers looks perfect. The aftercooler looks awesome. Computer, all those all those auxiliary parts are are. In excellent condition, so. So we'll just off, we off those, and, you know. Put some money in the piggy bank for buying something new. So, so what about you know what? What about doing more traditional? How about if you think that gardener might fit I, in there? Right. <laughs> Not only traditional, what do we have on hand? That yeah, we don't have to pay for. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 Start thinking I think there's enough displacement to carry it. What do you think? I think uh, let's let's go measure, Matt. I think it might be too tall. Too tall? They used to yeah really depend on that stroke in those old I, engines. I would love to see the six seventy one fit in there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. Just dry stack it straight up. It would be Really mess this boat up. They would know you when you came into the anchorages yeah. with you, you know, like a 471 screaming. I think we're going to have to realize that everything we do is custom. Yep. And it's custom. <laughs> you pay extra for custom. Uh, professor, what do you think? Can we stuff uh, Sam's gardener? It, it depends. Okay, there's always there's always a solution. Um, we got about 21 inches of space to spare, so that brings us uh, about to the top of you know the injection pump. So. <laughs> The answer is we can, but we have to build a box. It comes up on the back deck to cover it. No, the answer is a definite a no. Definite no on the gardener. So yeah, it looks like from the gardener, we're uh, 18 inches too high, but just think you could cut a hole in the cockpit floor, and when you pulled into a marina, you'd be the talk. Like, you'd have that beautiful valve yeah. covers. Yeah, I think you do. Yeah, Lexan walls on the little, little yeah. doghouse. You can see yeah. the engine shining in there. Mm -hmm. You know one thing we haven't thought about yet is what if we put a Holy smokes. And bring the shaft forward and put the engine going in the opposite direction. Oh, we love doing fiberglass work. <laughs> do it. Yeah, really, I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of options. Yeah. I you think it just gets too high in too the fast. back. Yeah. yeah. In the back, yeah. Uh, that was a bad idea. Anyhow. Uh, well, so now they're... What about, so what do they do now? They're doing outboards, right? Yeah. But if they weren't doing outboards, I think that's probably what they would be doing because that's the only way you're going to get this squat little mm -hmm. engine in there is with a... B drive set up to turn, so it, around. turn gain, it around. Gain yeah. that 18 inches or something. Yeah, but now it makes all the sense in the world from the factory. They're just throwing big, big outwards yeah, on the back. Production and, is production. Yeah. And it turns out the money spends the same. So, 
Mm -hmm. But all the things you have to deal with with a gas boat, right? Tankage, ventilation, and all that. Well, and at the end of the day... It's easy to do when you're building the boat around it, right? At the end of the day, Art, do you want to uh, tackle figuring out how to mount an outboard and do a bunch of fiberglass work to plug the holes? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and also just for our program, right? We we like these projects because yeah. it's... It's it's good experience for the students and yeah. going in authentic learning, right? Authentic learning, yeah. Go slam a you know a big outboard on the back. First of all, you spend all of our work. budget on a giant outboard yes, motor that we can't afford. Right. For what to what end? Right. Yeah. We're not getting much We're out of it. Not getting much out of it. Yeah. So okay. Those are out. No gardener, no yeah. outboard, no Yanmar. What's that leave us with, fellas? This is where we've been doing this morning. We got well, out the our small engine market is smaller all the time and it really it's Beta, the players, Beta, Ovo, and Yanmar. Mm -hmm. So we, so we get our little yeah. metric stick out here and some dimensions, and it turns out the uh, the, the two motors, Yanmar and Volvo, the big ones, if we want to target 150, 175 horse, do semi displacement, don't, they don't exist. Well, they exist, but um, they're, they're all. They don't exist on that boat. No, way too long. Yeah, most of them, I mean, most of them are too wide that you can't even fit them in with being able to get in. But yeah, the, the, the Volvo, bigger issue the, the, really the is... The D5 like, is too wide, for sure. So yes. The Volvo's out. Yeah, the bigger the Volvos are definitely out. Uh, both or the, the D4, yeah, the D4 won't fly there. Both of the Yanmars in the 150 to 200 horse range are too long. Yep. Tent to tail. Yeah. Tail to tail. Or one of them, I think, is like, you know, with the proper amount of butter and margarine, you might be able to squeeze it in. You um, just have to pull the engine for an oil and if you want to do an oil change, no biggie. You just pull the engine and, uh, and... And by the way, what else did we notice, fellas? The exhaust on that motor is on the opposite side. Correct. Yes, Which, it is starboard side exhaust. So if we're putting in a big footprint of an engine with port side exhaust... exhaust is huge. Yeah, it's, it's, what, it's called a four-inch or five-inch. So, so we'd have to move the whole water lift, the holding tank. We love working on holding tanks. Redesign the lazarette. Right. No deal. At this point. Yeah. So now the consideration is, and I'd love to get some feedback on yeah. our owner's group, both the EMR, mostly the, the Tug Nuts and the Ranger 25 page. If we go with a traditional displacement hull, this is what, what Art does and I do, and you know, we put between here and Alaska at seven knots, six and a half knots. Displacement speeds. That's what tugboats used to do. Right. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously it would reduce the amount of people interested in purchasing it. You're not going to yeah, do your 15 <laughs> knots. Yeah. Push and wake and, you know. But it would actually fit, be serviceable. It would be a huge money saver. I mean, there's a lot of advantages to putting in, you know, 50 to whatever, 75 horsepower engine or something like that. More than enough to reach hull speed. Right. As a member of the boating public, I would appreciate having the Ranger Tub that's yeah. not capable of passing my sailboat. <laughs> I mean, you, they're just tossing me around. And let them join the club. You've had those moments just being passed. <laughs> passed by Ranger Cubs. Yeah, there's there's been a few. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, no, I think those are some, in, in my opinion, being a person who's always stuck on displacement boats anyways, uh, but also it, it makes a ton of sense. Okay. Way less fuel. I mean, you're, you're the, I, I don't know what the number would look like, but taking... We'll, we'll run some numbers. We should, yeah, we'll, we'll do some numbers, but yeah, taking it... Distance is boat travel. Right. Yes, between fuel stops at yeah. least. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, you put a fuel efficient little little mechanical diesel that anybody can work on, right? It's Serviceability is the, our number one goal as technicians. Exactly. Because yeah. we want this next engine to last 50 years in this boat or however long this boat is in existence. Sure. Sure. I mean, you can always run a, uh, you, you know, the, the boat that we had in there before with the 150 horsepower. If they didn't if they weren't running it at the top all the time it cut speed back but then the engine is underloaded carboning up fouling and and you know you have to run it and purge it everything this thing here if you have the right horsepower if you're happy with the speed of six knots you run it at 80 percent power engine and, loves it. and an engine will love it and it'll last forever right and in all probability most mm -hmm. of these people were probably in the mid-range and not operating it Right. Well, I, yeah, right. I mean, I think if you're going, you know, from Manacortes to Friday Harbor, sure, put the yeah, coals to where you blast there and get there. But yeah, when but you're going to, to catch a can, yeah. or you're trying to get to Comox on a tank of gas. Yeah. 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 Right, right. You start paying those fuel bills, you start going, hey, wait a second, maybe we'll. Especially the metric Metric, metric, metric pricing. pricing yeah. for One liter equals a gallon kind of pricing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, 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 yeah, really kind of, and, it, you know, that 
that footprint we have in that engine space really is not big. Even when we've started looking at these these smaller, yeah, smaller engines, right? They're so we're smaller, but they're not half the size. Fills they're up, not half fills the size. Up quick, yeah. yeah, it does. So so right now, just kind of what we've looked at, we're sort of sort of dialed it down to either beta, like they're fifty mm-hmm. or sixty horse beta, yeah. um, or something in the Volvo D two series, um, and they do. 60, 75 horsepower. Uh, yeah, 50, 60, and 75, all in that series. Um, so those would fit. Those would fit. Okay, hold on. Two motors, beta, Volvo. I get it, low horsepower. I was editing the video, and Matt says, hey, we forgot one of our favorite engines, the Yanmar, the small ones. We were looking at the big 150, 175 horsepower, of course, and none of those fit. Once we decided, like, let's consider a smaller engine, the 4JH. I mean, look at this thing. 57 horsepower, non-turboed, 3,000 RPM, um, and it's shorter than the both the Beta and the Volvo. So we're definitely going to add that to the lineup of mock-ups and of possibilities to put in the Lady okay. M. So those are two good options. Mm-hmm. What we determined with rough metric. Take sure, metric. yeah, we haven't done any proper um, mock-ups or anything yet. Yeah, we're we're going to get some that. feedback. We'll run some numbers. Um, on this idea of a small engine, I think we need to build like we did on yeah. uh, King's Pride. Art was our expert with uh, building a mock-up engine and yeah. being like, this is exactly where it's going to sit and how it's going to go before we spend any money. And I'll start getting some pricing on the on the various motors as well. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Price matters. I think the 60, I'm just looking at the way the fuel oil filters are located and how easy it'll be to do, the basic maintenance mm-hmm. that we would do. And that's that's why it's all home again, man. That's beta's, everything is designed to be maintained off the front, so we just have to customize the front bulkhead a little bit. But I think it would I'm be a fan of the nine right. turbo, even yeah. though I know, um, I mean, John Neal got 14,000 hours out of a turbo Volvo. Sure. Well, his, the D50, I think, is natural. Natural. Then. Uh, but then they go to, yeah, I think they turbo at 60. At 60. So mm-hmm. that's consideration, but that's not, a, that's not a deal breaker for me. No, it's not. Those are, it's in not. today's world, a turbo engine is no big deal. Mm-hmm. No, lots to think about. Yeah, lots lots to, think about. to think about for yeah, sure. It's not going to be a. It's not going to be an easy fix. There's going to be some new one to figure it out for sure. Turns out that's like all of our stuff. Yeah. So we've also got uh, staircase built, which has been godsend. We're going to make yeah. a thousand trips up there, yeah. and we have student David, who's lead point lead for all of our other projects on the boat. As we before we, you know, students can't put an engine in until we decide and buy it, buy right. it up, but. Um, we got a point for doing all the systems. Plug it in, charge batteries, test everything, figure out what, figure out what all's there. Find find out where where the what are we dealing with? Yeah, find out where the batteries where are. Where the batteries are, are. Uh, start there. Yeah. We're in the nice warm workshop. So yep. leave us a few comments. Like yeah. this is what we do, and you know, we're 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 good at what we do, but there's probably things we haven't considered or thought about. So put some sure. comments down there, give us some likes, yeah. and let us know. Well, and then, yeah, and then those of you who are watching, you know, maybe Ranger owners, you know, would it be an absolute deal breaker if the thing doesn't, you know, doesn't go semi displaced? Doesn't plane. plane. Well, they don't you plane. Know? Semi-plane. Semi-plane. It's, yeah, yeah, it's kind of more than this. Yeah. <laughs> Just faster than the sailboats. That's what yes. they are. Yep. Mm-hmm. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy.